Hmm. So it's basically, okay. uh, whew, imagine at that age, what's, what's, uh, uh, and you weren't you really prepped for this, were you? I mean, you were told there was a ceremony, but nothing, you didn't expect anything like this, uh, from what Not, I gathered well, talking I, to you. Well, it, 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 it was very difficult to go through, just because the sense of horrific oppression down there, too, was the worst. I, I mean, i have gone through some ceremonies in my life, in the Illuminati, you, you do go through them. But I have to say that, in my experience, this was the worst, just because, I can't explain the amount of darkness in a room like that. Just it's pure evil. And unless you've ever been in, 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 in a seeing oppression, I mean, it's just horrible. It wasn't just what happened, but just, I mean, the, the oppression. And I'm a Christian now, and I know the difference now between when there's evil present oppression or, or when God's love is present and joy and peace, which is the exact opposite of what was in that room. Now, you know what I find quite interesting about this? Uh, about 25 years ago, I was a reporter and a freelance writer in Rome, and I spent six years there. I walked through the Vatican many, many times, uh, hundreds of times, covered the papal addresses, things like that. And during that time, I was there during a Vatican scandal, uh, which involved the church uh, bank and other things, uh, members of the Illuminati, the Freemasons, uh, I was approached by a woman on Via Veneto, I'll never forget this, uh, Rome's a small town and people knew I was covering stories about the secret societies, things like that, because I had to ask people. Well, this woman came up to me and told me similar stories. Uh, she wasn't quite as specific because she couldn't handle it. She would break out crying yeah. and had tried to commit suicide twice because she couldn't get out of the Illuminati. She was a member, a young she was, again, born into it, a fairly, a very wealthy Italian, northern Italian family. And uh, she told me basically the same ceremony uh, took place with her. And so when I started talking to you, I wanted to relay that to you and to also relate to my listeners that I heard about this 25 years ago uh, from a woman by the name of Maria and many other people, several other people in Italy that I talked to. Uh, I was never able to... Um, uh, locate or really probably for my own safety never find out what happened but again Svali's uh, corroborating a story that I heard about 25 years ago we'll get back after this break with this incredible story about a member of the Illuminati who's now uh, out of the group and safe on the Republic Broadcasting Network okay uh, we're back on the investigative journal uh, I'm your host uh, Greg Szymanski we're talking to Svali a member of the family uh, the Order, the Illuminati for over 30 years. Uh, a smile, you leave the induction ceremony, uh, you walk out into the Vatican courtyard, and what do uh, you leave with one of the fathers, I believe? What did he tell you then? At that point, he just told me to never forget that, you know, he told me that I performed well during the ceremony because I didn't scream or, you know, uh, pass out or, or anything like that. So he, he said, you do very well, and he was pleased. And... Then we went and stayed at, at a home nearby, a, a local, um, it must have been a local person. I didn't know them. We spent the night there before we went back to Germany. Okay, and what about the other people during the ceremony? How did they handle themselves? Do you remember? Uh, I'm going to say, unfortunately, I'm so, um, and, and when you're in that kind of situation, the last thing they're thinking about sometimes is what the other people are doing. <laughs> I was just so trying to not, like, lose it myself. And and that I, I do know that, I mean, no one screamed or shouted, you know, or anything like that. Everyone was quiet. I think to say dead silence is, unless the person was spoken to, is true. Or unless hmm. they, they had to go forward and kiss the ring. All right, let's, uh, let's move on. I think we... Uh... Uh, yeah. The question I wanted to ask you, and this is such a wide subject, I've had a chance to talk to you a number of, number of uh, days, and I've done some stories about it. Uh, you go back home, you're 12 years old, you said you were schooled into 12 disciplines. So your life yeah. begins, uh, and you know now you're in some type of organization that isn't, uh, that is very different than uh, what most people experience. But tell us, you know, I guess what I want to do is leave it open to you to begin. I mean, you've written so in-depth on this story. We're, uh, I'm just going to give you the microphone and let you begin and tell, uh, tell, tell the listeners what you think is important about your original training, 
about the group and about uh, uh, you know many things that I know people want to know about the Illuminati. Go ahead. Okay. Well, Greg, first I want to say that my purpose in, in talking about this is not to glorify evil because there there are very wicked people out there, very powerful people. And I don't want to at all magnify their power, but I want, do want people to know that this is real, that these people exist, that people who say there are people out there that are involved in this activity, it really happened. Um, I also, because I know that there are children being hurt, in the group every day, and that's my motivation for coming forward. Um, I don't like giving interviews obvious, for obvious reasons. Um, but I'm willing this one time to lay aside my thoughts of personal safety to, because these people need to be stopped. It needs to be stopped. Okay. Okay. Well, go ahead. And normally children in, in the group are born into it. Uh, well, the Illuminati very rarely does outside recruitment. That's not their main method. It's just passed down generally, generationally from father to son and mother to daughters to children until the whole family line is, is in it. Um, throughout the centuries, people have tried to escape, but um, a lot of times they were um, either poisoned, murdered, or set up to look like a suicide. They, they don't like it when people leave, and they try to make it very difficult simply because um, it looks bad. <laughs> they go through an enormous amount of training. From the time you're an infant, you you undergo indoctrination. And when I say indoctrination, I don't just mean like cult programming so much as watching your parents and seeing what they do. My parents modeled their behavior. To them, the group was very important to growing up. I saw that three times a week, everything was dropped to attend to the activities. Okay. Okay. Um, what a lot of, and after through, basically the, the the training process is designed to help you take on your adult role in the group. The Illuminati covers so many levels, though. Too, it goes all the way from what most people think of as like a satanic coven type thing at the very low local level, all the way through. It's a huge, enormous business corporation. At the mid levels, you have people overseeing finances and administration, um, who are overseeing, I mean, these people are making a lot of money through gun running, through white slavery, prostitution, pornography. They have links and ties to the mafia left and right. And, in fact, the mafia are afraid of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, think about yeah. it. I mean, you know, but, but because they know that you don't cross the, you know, the members of the group. They have a very spiritual orientation. They're not satanic, though. They're Luciferian, which is a difference. But mm -hmm. the ultimate goal of, of their spiritual philosophy and their steps of discipline is they believe that, that should you complete all your training, that you become a god. That is their actual end goal. They believe in the achievement of godhood, of a luminous philosophy, through different means, through what they call enlightenment or illumination which is how they got their name. Mm -hmm. um, they're international. Um, uh, in Europe, there's uh, 12 fathers who sit that represent the different nations of Europe. 